Pull the lever. Crunk. Wrong lever! Huh? Why do we even have that lever? Hello. It is time for another episode of But Make It Vintage. Alternative title, But Make It Vintage. It's been a while. It's been like two months? No, April. Like three months. Wow. We are back for another episode, which I'm super freaking excited for. The character that I want to do for this one, which you probably already know because of the title, but the glamorous Yzma. In case you don't know who Yzma is, she's from Emperor's New Groove, which is seriously an underrated Disney movie and one of my absolute favorites. And um, she's a queen. I've noticed a trend where for a lot of this series, I choose villains and that's just because villains are more fun. It's science. Good guys are boring. Uh, I tend to gravitate towards the 1930s when it comes to butt make it vintages and I don't really know why that is I I just it just kind of happens to be that way and so this episode is no different so I wanted to give Yzma the old Hollywood Mae West Jean Harlow treatment the idea to do her came from these amazing illustrations of the Disney villains as just beautiful queens. The artist, I believe, is Sveta Shubina. I really hope I didn't murder that last name. Why is it so weird and dark in here? Turn on the living room lights. But they did a really amazing Yzma. I wanted to go off of that idea and do my own vintage version. I did get a pattern for this. 1937 evening gown. Oh. So, before we get started, this video does have a sponsor, and it is my all-time favorite sponsor of all time, and that is Hunt a Killer. So before we head to design phase, here is a quick word from sponsor Rachel. Let's talk about... <sighs> this is hard. Murder. As I said, the sponsor for today's video is Hunt a Killer. What it is is a monthly murder mystery subscription box. Each month you will get a box such as this and each box is a different episode. And within each box you will find an envelope. And within said envelope you will find... One thing you may not know about me is I'm horrible at opening envelopes. Hold on. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Yeah. Clues that will help you solve the case. So the campaign I just finished is called Curtain Call. Basically what you have to do is solve a disappearance slash murder from the 1930s. For each box you have a sort of goal. So it'll be eliminate a suspect or find the murder weapon. The amount of detail that they go into, I've said this before, but is insane. There will be documents where you only need a small section of it, but they will include the full thing and include way more information that you don't technically need, but it just, it really helps with immersing you in this and making you feel like you're actually going over old documents. They start at $25 a box, which is kind of steep, but when you think about it, it's cheaper than going out to dinner. And if you do want to try it, you can go to Hunt a Killer and use my code for 20% off of your first box. That is Hunt a Killer. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get back to Yzma. Welcome back. Let's head on over to design phase and figure out what this glam old Hollywood queen Yzma is going to look like. Probably important. Design phase. Quite obviously, we are going to stick with this lovely pattern. Let me pull up a picture of our girl. I have this really pretty head turban. It's inspired by kind of that time period that I think I want to use. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do those earrings just because the holes in my ears have indeed closed up and they've been closed for quite a few years now so put them in just in case but i don't think that's gonna happen i think i'm gonna have kind of a feather shawl and then i really want to do this flippy do i don't even know what that's made of i think it's supposed to be like a big feather but i want to figure out how to do it tidal wave johnny tsunami action here i <laughs> think that's the general idea so now let's talk about the materials Is that as cool as I thought it was gonna be? Excuse me. Beep beep. Beep. Down. So starting with the obvious, which is the dress itself, I got this eggplant 
material. Pretty silky material. We are like crows and we love shiny things here. The accessories do you have. Oh, oh my god. No, 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 no. Feather boa. Which, believe me, I don't normally like using any animal products in my works. Tried looking for faux feather stuff and it just, right now, is impossible to find, so... And then to go with that, I got this black netting. <sighs> Bedazzled little jewels here. Not too many materials. So I'm actually gonna take a look at the pattern pieces because I haven't done that yet. Don't have to worry about ruining anything because it's just kind of a reproduction of an older pattern. It's on some nice uh, thick boys. Don't have to be quite as careful with it. Just kind of a joke in itself because I'm not very careful to begin with. <laughs> Doesn't look too, too bad. I think we can do it. I think the best thing to do right now would be to set my main fabric up and lay the pattern pieces on. Let's get started. Carbonated. So I'm about to pin these uh, paper patterns to the fabric. You know what that means. <laughs> when I don't wear my knee pads, you guys call me out on it, so you asked for this. Knee pads. Okay, so here are the pattern pieces all cut out. These are the three skirt pieces. One of them is on a fold, so it's kind of like two pieces, I guess. This is the bodice, and then these two pieces are the rest of the bodice. As always, it's a bit hard to picture until I actually start putting things together. So I think I'm gonna pause for today and then pick up another day and actually start putting things together. So I'll see you then. Day two. Now that I have all the pattern pieces cut out and ready to start joining together, I took a look at the actual instructions this morning. So small bit confusing. So because this is just a reprinting of an old pattern, it's a little bit confusing because everything is just typed up into sentences. So you really, really have to take it step by step here. I think once I start putting stuff together, it'll make a little bit more sense. The pattern's definitely meant for a more advanced seamstress. <laughs> I think there's a high chance that I'll be making stuff up as I go along while I'm sewing this. The plan for today, start sewing together all those pieces. So let's go do that. Good boy. So this is what we have so far. Here's my apprentice. You practicing those stitches? Skirt that's all put together. And then I just finished making it up as I'm going along, fitting these straps to the bodice. So now, obviously, all that's missing is the stomacher. So I have to gather this a bit and attach the stomacher on top, just like top stitch. Same with the skirt. My bangs are full-fledged 90s boy teen heartthrob. As my apprentice will show you, I do have a, excuse me, um, sir, I will be taking this from you. Yeah, so it will go, oh no, oh God.
Here she is. <laughs> so far, at least. Everything is put together. The top stitching is not super pretty, but it's still something that I'm working to get better on. But uh, we're learning here, all right? Now I just have to figure out how to close it and such. And um, for once in my darn tootin' sewing videos, I'm actually probably gonna hit a goal that I set for myself. The top stitching took freaking forever, and I swear that if I prick myself with a pin one more time, or have to hear another pin drop on the ground, I'm gonna erupt like an old-timey mushroom cloud in a cartoon. So I think that about wraps it up for today, and then tomorrow we can start on all the accessories and the fun stuff like that, so. Day three. Here she is so far. So far, meaning the dress is complete. I did try her on and she does fit very nice after a few adjustments, of which don't exactly make total sense. I put some darts in areas that probably shouldn't have darts, but I did shorten the waist a bit because it was a little bit too long in the torso area. I think I'm gonna move on to the feather shawl thing. Not near, are you sweating? That's gonna be pretty simple. I think what I'm gonna do is walk off screen. Ah, ah! Freaking mic. Out of this mesh material, I think I'm just gonna make a general cape shape and then quite simply just sew, yep, the feathers to it. That's the plan. Squeaker, squeak, squeak, squeaking. Hi, hello, voiceover Rachel here. I initially made this little flippy do out of warbler, but it just looked really, really silly and I couldn't find a good way to secure it to the hat, so I ended up scratching it. I stuck some of those acrylic gems to the sticky side of the Velcro strips that I have. No specific design for this one, I just kind of winged it. Ta-da! So here is the shawl. And I added some black ribbon on the outside just to zhuzh it up a bit. And now that that is complete, we can start the makeup. Here goes nothing. First things first, I think I'm gonna put on my wig and turban. If you have an aversion to extreme attractiveness, I suggest you shield your eyes now. Mmm, nice. Wow. The hat, which I'm really hoping fits my head with this wig because it's already super tight on my gigantic dome piece. Come on. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> Once the makeup's done, I'm gonna go in and fix this mess. I think I want to make my skin color a bit like gray, so a lot more desaturated and a bit more cartoony, kind of like hers. I've done this once before during the face wars and it worked okay, so I'm gonna try it again. Basically what I'm gonna do is mix my foundation with a water activated paint. I'm gonna mix it with a gray. So it's just gonna desaturate my foundation a bit. My foundation. And then to mix that up. For the eyeshadow, I stuck with these three main colors. I wanted a sort of exaggerated 30s style with a little bit of Jessica Simpson in Jessica Simpson with a little bit of Jessica Rabbit in there. Check out that doing makeup face. Why do I make that face? I put some darker shadow on the bottom lids because 30s makeup was pretty schmooky. I then drew out that exaggerated upper lid to give it a cartoony look. I know this looks like hot garbage. We will blend it out, don't worry. By the end, it will only look like lukewarm garbage. I decided to add some lighter concealer to show that wood a little bit easier. I believe the kids call it a cut crease. And then blended it out with the purple shadow. Taking an eyebrow pencil, I drew on really thin brows at the very top of my natural ones. 
Then, taking a gray shade, I contoured my face to give it a more dramatic, older age effect. And also trying to match Yzma's features a little bit more. I was not going for subtlety here and wanted it to look a bit cartoony. Look like Palpatine. Something, something, something dark side. I am the Senate. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> and then took a smaller brush for those really fine lines and wrinkles. For lashes, I cut up some really thick ones that I have into individual spikes, so they kind of mimic her dramatic ones. For the lips, I started with a lip liner and made a really sharp Cupid's bow. Then I filled it in with a lipstick. Mm. Pretty. I've got to pop that highlighter. Mm. Mm. I'm going to put on my dress and do all of this, that desaturated color, and then I've got to figure out this situation. I will see you in the reveal. Pull the lever, Grunk. Wrong lever! Huh? Why do we even have that lever? foundation shade handsome squidward so as always with my butt make it vintages i am going to do a little bit of a wrap up what went well what didn't go well what i can improve on so on and so forth overall i am very happy with how it came out i really really like how the dress came out it's definitely something that i would wear again which is very important when it comes to this kind of stuff and something that i at least try to do try to make pieces that i can wear again because i think otherwise it's a bit wasteful for me to make costumes that are just gonna sit in my closet it's surprisingly flattering and I say surprisingly because I struggle a lot with making the clothing that I make fit my body the way that I want it to I think that's something that must come with experience <laughs> and I'm still not quite there yet like I said there are darts in places that shouldn't be darts and such and I'm not gonna show you cuz you yell at me <laughs> But yeah, overall, I'm super happy with it. I think it's really, really pretty. The shawl, I'm not super crazy about. I think the idea was there, but I don't know if it was the color of the feathers or what, but it kind of didn't go with the dress as much as I wanted it to. From certain angles, oh no. How long was that like that? I think from certain angles, I look like Tim Curry from Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> I don't know. I had fun. That's it. Thank you, Hunt a Killer, for sponsoring this video. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. I will see you in my next video. Bye! Hey, yug! Dee 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 doo. Freaking frick. I'm such a sloucher. God. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> Posture. Uh, armpits are sweating. Mm, 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 mm. Make sure to wear a sundress for filming because if I've learned anything in my sewing journey, it's that uh, I sweat profusely. Some would say an impressive amount. It's all about proper ventilation. Purpley. <laughs> wow. So actually, so bleh. testing one, two, three. Sibilis. So itchy. Oh my god. Mmm. I hate how this feels. I give you a kiss, but you got lots of makeup, so I'm just gonna kiss your shoulder. Love you. Love you. Roll in it, roll in it, roll in it. Get my squats in. Don't be my little crunk. Stay. Good boy. <laughs> Stay. Rocker, rocker, hurry, picture, sure.